eyes and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of Christ my Savior. Good evening. We find it written in Psalms 18, verse 1 and 3. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength. In whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. These words are words spoken by King David and shows the love that King David had for God and the trust that he had for God as well. David would call upon the Lord when he was in trouble. He called upon the Lord and thanked the Lord when he had good times and bad times. David was staying always close to the Lord. Here's a poem that I heard once, and it was written by Anonymous. It says, Ever wonder what would happen if we treated our Bible like we treat our cell phone? What if we carried it around in our purse or pockets all day? What if we flipped through it several times a day? What if we turned back to go get it when we forgot it? What if we used it to receive messages from the text? What if we treated it like we couldn't live without it? What if we gave it to our kids as gifts? What if we used it when we traveled? What if, we, what if we used it when we had an emergency? <clears throat> Think about this. Is this something to make you go, where's my Bible? Or think about then understand the fact that unlike our cell phones, we don't have to worry about our Bible being disconnected. Because Jesus paid the bill. He paid the price in full. And we want to say, talking to God through Jesus, there's no drop calls. When one is praying or reading the Bible, there's no, better, no worry about uh, getting an upgrade because they can't hear you or that the battery's going to go dead. It's there for all times. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. When Jesus died on that cross, he was thinking of you. So many people, I don't think, put it in perspective, but Jesus was thinking of you then, even though you were not born, because he was looking to all afar off. Jesus made sure we have a way to communicate with him. We had the written word of God. We had the gift of the Holy Ghost to help us understand. And we are told in the Gospel account, the, uh, as it was written by St. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach ye all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. It's the same for us today as it was for the apostles. The difference is today Jesus didn't give it to us verbally. He gives it to us through the word. And if we study the word, the Holy Ghost is there to help us bring it to remembrance. On the opening day of the church, on the opening day of the Lord's church, Jesus made it clear, as he made it clear in John 3, he made it clear how we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. As we are instructed in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 38, where he says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In order to buy a cell phone, or in order to attain a cell phone, you have to do something. Okay, you have to purchase it at least one time, you have to pay for minutes, and there's all kinds of contracts and everything. In order to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, one just needs to what? One needs to believe in Jesus, trust in Jesus, repent of their ways, and turn and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. And then you will have forever, as long as you want it, until you discard it, the gift of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> you know, 
Some people think the Holy Ghost just comes upon them and we can get it, but that's not the way it works. Just like anything in life, you have to do something to get something. Look in the book of Acts 19. In the book of Acts 19, it should put to rest anyone's thinking that the Holy Ghost is automatically there for you no matter what. Because when we look at this here, we see John's apostles, and we see the apostles of Jesus. In the book of Acts 19, starting with verse 1, it says, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, that they shall believe on him which shall come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. To communicate with Jesus, one has to have the gift of the Holy Ghost. To communicate with God, the Father, one has to have the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Bible is very clear on this. John the Baptist made it clear that he was baptizing men and paving the way for Jesus to come, but his baptism wasn't of the fire. The Holy Ghost is the fire. Turn to the Gospel account. It's written by St. Luke, please, chapter 3. And again, these are just words from the Bible to help us understand that there is a price to pay to have this communication with Jesus. <clears throat> and the Gospel account of Luke chapter 3 verse 15 tells us, And as the people were in expectation, and all men mushed in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not, John answered, saying unto them, All, I indeed baptize you with water. But one mightier than I cometh, the latches of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his grinder, but the shaft he will burn with fire unquenchable. When you look at this here, it is written so that we have no understanding of the baptism of Jesus versus the baptism of John. Baptism of Jesus is the only way one receives the gift of the Holy Ghost. You know, people back then thought John was the Christ. He made it very clear he was not the Christ. He made it very clear that there was going to be a baptism. Of, but his baptism was just of repentance. Jesus' baptism is the repentance, but so we receive the blood of Christ so that we receive the gift of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. John's was an outward sign for an inward grace. Jesus is a sign that we have to God, and God looks down and sees the blood because when we are baptized with Jesus, we are buried with Jesus. We receive the blood of Jesus. We have the protection of the blood. We know that at the time there were many people that believed John was the, was the Christ, but John made it very clear that he wasn't the Christ. <clears throat> we know that the angels told the apostles in Acts 19, and we also, well, I'm sorry, in Acts chapter 1, verse 5, it says, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. We know that all through the book of Acts we see where one is baptized into Jesus. So, one is to go out of the way to get a free phone, cell phone, which isn't really free because they're going to pay for all this stuff one way or another. But yet, here Jesus paid the full price and all we have to do is what? Come, trust him, obey him. <clears throat> it's real simple. Ephesians chapter 4. And there's other places too. But Paul lays it out very, very plainly. Just like Paul laid it out to the uh, disciples of John. 
He lays it out here to the church of Thesian, which is us today. Yeah. He says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worldly of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as you're called, and one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Goes right along to what he told the disciples of John. There's one baptism and only one baptism that will save you and only one baptism that gets you the right to pray to God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son. Jesus Christ. The same yesterday and today and forever. Finding Jesus is finding that perfect cell phone. But really, finding Jesus is better than a perfect cell phone because a perfect cell phone, the battery's going to die. You know how you recharge your life with Jesus? Pick up the Bible. You read it. You study. You pray. Requires no electric. We take and we spend time with Jesus. Choosing the wrong cell phone and the wrong cell phone plan 200 years from now really ain't going to affect you, is it? Might affect you now. It's not going to affect you 200 years from now. But choosing the wrong way to worship Jesus Christ, missing the way that one is supposed to come to Christ will affect you 200 years from now. So many people say, it don't matter as long as I have my heart in the right place. We know that just believing in Jesus when we study the Bible is more to than just believing. The devil believes there's a Jesus. The Muslims believe there's a Jesus. The Jews even believe there's a Jesus. But it's not going to help them because they don't trust and obey. Brother James tells it best in James chapter 2, 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. You know why the devils tremble? Because they know that Jesus has all the power. And when he comes back, it's over for them. It's over. God so loved the world. He loved the people of the world. He gave us a way to get out of this world alive through his son, Jesus. Jesus is a way to eternal life. But one has to believe in Jesus. Not only in their words, but in their actions. It's not just saying, it's not just verbally, verbally speaking it, it's how you uh, lead your life. One who wants to be a disciple of Jesus, a servant of Jesus, it's a life change. And sometimes we have to work our whole life while we're here on this earth in order to get a change the way it should be. But it is once we get a change, it's a work keeping it that way because the world's always pulling at you. And the devil's pulling at you. And everything's pulling at you. You know, when we read the Bible and we understand the truth about God, you really start understanding the reason it says believeth and not just believe. You know, I believe water will quench my thirst. But if I don't drink it, it's not going to quench my thirst, is it? My thirst is not going to be satisfied by just saying, I believe water is going to do it, or holding a glass of water. I have to drink the water. The same here. I believe Jesus is the answer, but then I do nothing else. That's not the way it works. We know that we're okay. <clears throat> Some may think they're okay just because they believe in God, even though they can't back it up. They think they're okay because they do everything good. They think they're good. Because they haven't murdered someone or stole something. But again, Jesus gives us the answer. And this is part of the plan and why we have Jesus. And why we need to understand how to get Jesus the right way. When we go to the gospel account, just told to us by St. Matthew in chapter 7. And we need to understand what Jesus is saying here. Again, he is speaking to all who are seeking the truth. All who are seeking, Jesus says in Matthew 7, 21, 
Now everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into my kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And I named them many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Here you have people, there's Jesus saying, just because you say you know me, just because you say you donate this money in my name, just because you say you do these works in my name, you do not have my permission because you never came to me. It is called a will and testament. To be part of the body of Christ, one has to come to Jesus the way Jesus tells us. We have to beware of false doctrines. It will lead your soul astray. Jesus is clear that he is the only way. The only way, the only truth is through Jesus. Jesus tells us in the gospel account is given to us by St. John, chapter 14, verse 6. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, think about that. If Jesus says the only way you will come to the Father is through him, and we know the only way we come to Jesus is through baptism, which means that we have to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have to repent of our sins, we have to go under that water and come up a new creature in Christ. That is the only way it works. What if we treated our Bibles the way we treat our cell phones? What if? What then? The Bible, it's our instruction manual. Basic instructions before leaving earth. B-I-B-L-E. Okay? We know that the Bible can be used so we can look at Jesus, we can talk to Jesus, we can communicate with Jesus, and by communicating with Jesus, we're communicating with God, the Father above. If the Bible is our instruction manual, shouldn't we be carrying it with us while we're alive? If it's our instruction manual on how to get out of this world alive, don't we want to keep it close to us at all times? You know, think about it. We carry our cell phones everywhere with us. We can't leave the house without it. Do we take our Bible with us every day? Do we have a Bible handy every day? If I checked the Bible every day like I checked my cell phone for messages, I would be much better off in my way of thinking towards God, the Father. If I turn back, if I leave my cell phone at home, I turn around and go back and get it. If I leave my Bible at home, do I even know I left it at home? You know, if we used our Bible in an emergency, think how much better we would be. Instead of calling or texting someone when you get upset, open your Bible. Find the answer. <clears throat> we need to use our Bible more and more every day. And like we use our phone. Think how many hours a day people are on their phone, on Facebook, on different chat medias. Spend more time in your Bible. I'm not saying don't be on Facebook. not saying don't be in chat medias. But I'm just saying... Use your Bible more. Amen. Trust in your Bible more. If we use our Bible as much as we use our phone and texting and talking, if we just did it half as much each day, how much stronger will we be in the Word of God? How many, how much do we pay for minutes on a phone? And how many minutes do we look and how many minutes we use a, a, a month on our, te on our cell phones? Now, ask yourself, how many minutes do I spend in the Bible a month? You know, we pay for a cell phone. We work so we can pay for a cell phone. Jesus bought and paid for this written word so that we could have it. Why don't we use it? It's here for us to use. <clears throat> in Psalms 55, 16 and 17, it tells us, As for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice 
There's no set time to just start talk to God. We talk about this many times. Get up in the morning, first thing. Thank God for another day to get it right. Thank God that you had a bed to sleep in last night. Thank the Lord for breakfast, for lunch. Thank the Lord you got to work safely. You don't have to sit down in an hour prayer. You know, you get to work safely, and you should get out of the car. And before you get out of the car, just look up and say, Lord, thank you for getting me here safely. Just little things like that. Keep him in the front burner. Call upon God. Call upon God to save me. Who else would you call upon to save you? How will you call upon the Lord your God today? We pray. We study the Bible. When one is studying the Bible, when one is in prayer, that is when we are talking to Jesus. And that's how we're talking to God, through Jesus. The Bible's not something you have to worry about using up all your minutes. You know, when you're on a cell phone, especially if you've got one of those ones that's got the card they pay for and then they use them up, or you use up all your minutes before your time's up. I'm not sure how that all works. I just noticed sometimes they run out of minutes. God doesn't have that on there. There's no limitations. He encourages you to use the word. He encourages us to pray and study he encourages us to bury ourselves into the Bible every day. Just think, if we carried our Bible around like we do our cell phone, if we used our Bible at least half as much as we do a cell phone, how important is that? As a servant of Christ, my Bible is important to me, more important to me than a cell phone. If I had the opportunity to witness to someone or to help them with a problem or difficult decision, I need a copy of the Word of God with me instead of relying on my feeble brain only. I need to make sure that as a servant of Christ that I have the tools that he has given me to do the job. You see, this is a tool. Whether we understand that or not, this really is a tool. It's no different than when you're going to work on anything, you want an instruction manual. And he gave us a complete instruction manual that we can use in our everyday life. How many times <clears throat> do people pull out their cell phone looking up information? Just think if you pulled out a Bible and looked up information half as many times, where would you be? How would that be in your life? What would that do to your whole relationship with God the Father? How much more scripture will we know how much more scripture could we share if we spent time really studying it out and really trying to understand what it's saying so that when the time comes and we need it, we can rattle it off the top of our head. But even better yet, if you got the Bible, you can say, look, I know that it's in here somewhere and you can pull it out and show the person and show them what it is that you're talking about. Leaving one's home without a cell phone makes many people turn around and go get it. But we need to learn to do that with our Bible. We need to carry a Bible with us. What's more important, really, in your day? The Bible is a lot more important to you than that cell phone ever will be. <clears throat> when we are studying the Bible, we should start hungering for more and more and more and more. We should be into the meat of the Word. I know that Paul... Peter says that it's like a new Christian is looking at like the sincere of the milk that they're striving for the word of God like milk out of a baby. But as we get off the milk we should be into the meat and we should desire more and more of this. We should seek, we should be reading the Bible and seeking out more and more of the meaning of the word of God. You need to look at the Bible as an instruction book. It's given to us by Jesus. Jesus paid a high price so we could have this instruction book. Do you study the wisdom of Proverbs? Do you study the book of Acts and the letters and the epistles that are written by the apostles? Do you realize that these are things that are written for us today? If you turn and learn to read this and read the book of Acts and understand that is the history of the church... This is how we should be as Christians. And the epistles are written not only to them, but to us today. 
so that we understand how we should be living our life as a disciple of Jesus. We need to learn to treat the Bible that we can't live without it. You know, I often wonder if the Bible came up missing, how long would it be before I missed it? That's a scary thought. You know, if your cell phone came up missing, you'd probably recognize it within five, ten minutes. But would I understand that with my Bible missing? We need to think about this. What if we gave Bibles to our grandchildren and our children instead of cell phones? What if we sat down with the children and with Bibles and open them up and show them the Word of God and get them to understand at an early age. We don't have to get into great things of ponder of like Jeremiah and stuff, but there are many things in there to show that Jesus loves them. There's many things in there that we can show the children how God so loved the world and that how Jesus loved the children. These are things that we should really stop and think about. You know, we can use the Bible to teach the children. <clears throat> you know, Proverbs tells us in Proverbs 22, verse 6, it says, Train up a child in the way he shall go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We know that some children, no matter what, they will depart from it, but here's the bottom line. We need to bring them up as a godly child. We need to bring them up as the Lord shows us how to raise a child. And that includes a, a disciplining a child when they're out of line and loving a child when they do right. We need to use the word of God so that they understand that there is truly a right and wrong and that they can't blame society. We need to give a child a chance to learn about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Letting a child learn about Jesus in an early age can only help that child when they get older to understand Jesus and the way they should live. And putting that in a child's mind at an early age will help, the, help defeat the devil later in life because you can bury it down in there deep. You see, a child knows Jesus. Newborn babies actually saw Jesus before they were born. I mean, that's so interesting when you think about it. A brand new child, a young child, knows God better than I do because he just saw him. Unlike our cell phone, we don't have to worry about our Bible being disconnected. That is so great. Jesus paid the bill. You know, if you're late paying for your cell phone, you'll find yourself cut off. If you're late paying for your cell phone, you can't call anyone. You got no information. People go panicking. They go nuts. God gave us this book, and only us, only we can cut ourselves off. When we accept the terms that Jesus laid out for us so that we can be a child of God, we are the only ones that can break those terms. And that's by not obeying the Lord, our Savior. <clears throat> I can't imagine anyone arguing that cell phones are becoming a problem in our society. People don't talk to each other anymore. They want to text instead of talk. We're having a lot of communication problems with kids because they don't know how to talk anymore, and it's getting to be very sad. We got people texting while they're driving and having calls and wrecks, and we see people walking down the street, and they got their face buried inside of a phone. I saw the other day, we was coming back from Louisville, a lady pushing a stroller, and a lady behind her pushing a stroller, and there was not a sidewalk. They're on the side at the edge of a road, and they got their face in a phone like this. I thought, Lord, they're not paying attention to the cars at all. We need to get ourselves back in a human race. We need to talk to each other, and we need to discuss the Bible more. I wonder how much better the Lord's church would be if the people in the Lord's church would get an obsession for God's word as they have for a cell phone or for Facebook or for the media out there. I wonder how much better off the Lord's church would be in showing people in this world about Jesus. 
God provided us with great messages and shows us a plan all laid out right here. You can get it on audio. You can get it on apps and read it through your computer. But we need to make sure that we understand the Word of God. The Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. It says, Let the peace of God rule in your heart, to the which also ye are called, in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you, Richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Again, we need to start thinking about, if Jesus was sitting beside me, is this what I would be doing? Because guess what? If you are part of his, he is there. We have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. The Bible is the word of God. It's more important than any cell phone. It's more important than anything else you ever will have on this earth. Do you realize that? The sad thing is, so many people a misplaced a cell phone, or they'll start losing something that they have, earthly possession, and they panic. But when they misplace their Bible, or they can't find their Bible, or they forget their Bible, they don't panic. We need to panic. We need to keep it with us. The question always is, has God's holy word received your proper attention this week, this day, this moment? I would love thee, O oh God, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is to, worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. <clears throat> Think about this. We'll leave it with this. There will be a day that we will stand before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you know you cannot lie to him. He knows that at all. Which one do you think you wish you had more time spent with at that moment? In the Bible or on a cell phone? Something to think about. So let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Tonight, if you are outside of Christ for any reason, what is holding you out there? You know, if you have the covering of the blood and you've fallen away, you still have the covering of the blood. Repent, come back, come back to Jesus. Be like the 11 apostles, not like Judas. Judas didn't come back to Jesus. He went to the world. Don't go to the world. Go to Jesus. Jesus is the one that forgave your sins the first time. Jesus is always holding his arm out. It's not his arm is too short. It is our arms are too short. And if you don't have the blood of Jesus, what is holding you back? You know, man says we don't have to have the blood. Man says we don't have to be baptized. But Jesus is very, very clear. He says, verily, verily, I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Jesus says, that you are, must be born of the water and of the Spirit in order to see the Father in heaven. You can't make it much plainer than that as we stand and sing.